drink of choice. Third time lucky, come on. Good morning. Good morning on the streets of Belgrade. Belgrade, Serbia. We're here on another little mini adventure, seeing what we can find. Some relics of the past, perhaps. Now, we have a lot of history. Uh, usually I talk about history a lot in my videos, but you guys say I talk too much, so I'm not gonna bother at all. We're just gonna look at some things and have a little chit chat along the way. Uh, let me know if you like the new uh, narrative, we'll continue with that. Anyway, if you're a kid growing up in the 90s, you heard about Bosnia, you heard about Kosovo, you heard about Belgrade, uh, lots of things. Maybe you were playing with your toys and video games, you didn't really know what was going on, but a lot of people here in modern day Belgrade, anyway, they haven't forgotten. Here we see a sign that says Tony Blair, War criminal, 1999. The first bombing of its kind in NATO history. On March 24, 1999, Western nations carried out their threat against Serbia and began the biggest military conflict on Serbian soil since World War II. NATO saw the war as the only way to end President Slobodan Milosevic's violent crackdown in Kosovo, where his Serb nationalist forces were accused of ethnic cleansing against Kosovo's largely Muslim ethnic Albanian population. So NATO, I think we all know NATO now, don't we? Now Putin is in Ukraine, it's all over the news right now. Maybe you don't know Tony Blair. Tony Blair was a prime minister in the UK uh, in the 90s, late 90s. And he was sort of like one of the bigger voices of NATO and had a big hand in making the decision in dropping airstrikes on Belgrade. Uh, NATO bombed civilian targets here in Belgrade and various other places as well. Uh, they say it was an accident, you know, we, ac we didn't know civilians were in there or we hit the wrong building, whatever it is, you know. And the reason he did this is because in France twice they tried to sign a peace agreement uh, the president of Serbia, which was also the president of the Republic of Yugoslavia as well, Milosevic, I think his name was. Um, yeah, he said no, basically, rejected it, then pushed on full force into Kosovo, which was once a self-governing sort of province of the region. It used to be under Ottoman rule um, before Serbia got it back. Lots of history there, again. Um, but yeah, they're having none of it. Pushed troops into Kosovo. Uh, Milosevic uh, accused of genocide, war crimes and whatnot. So NATO, they uh, responded by dropping bombs. Uh, however, uh, a lot of civilians were killed, a lot of children. Some people say 81 children. I don't know the true figures without looking. It's been a long time since I learned this stuff. But the point is, the point of all of this is the people clearly haven't forgotten. Milosevic at the time was tried for war crimes. Uh, I don't believe that ended actually. I think he died of a heart attack before that kind of finally concluded. The leaders of the NATO, the ones that actually, uh, you know, approved the airstrike of this region, uh, they weren't really held accountable. You can see a lot of uh, kids, families here. Uh, it's pretty gory to be honest. You can clearly see a uh, someone were there with an open wound on their head and you may think it's it's just banners in the streets that people have put up or whatnot but there's not there's statues there's memorials there's buildings that have never been repaired they still sit in ruin today so it's interesting to see uh, 25 years ago and 25 years later now the memory still lives on um, will someone be held accountable probably not but it's the world we live in, isn't it? No one at war is innocent. Everyone is guilty to some degree. Some get away with it, some don't. Milosevic, rightfully so, yes, uh, tried. But the thing is, should NATO be held accountable? I think everyone should be held accountable to some degree. But it seems that that really never happened. And people have not forgotten about this even today. So right now in Belgrade, a lot of construction going on. More apartments, new buildings, new businesses, driving more money into the economy. But the problem is when new buildings come along, new things, new things to do, new things to see, a lot of history gets erased. So now, before it gets erased, let's uh, 
Let's see what we can find up here. Look at these stairs. Look how, <laughs> look how slanted they are. So I might have to be a bit quiet. Could be some construction workers up here. Angry Serbian construction workers. Wow. Look at that view there. It's amazing, isn't it? Okay, we'll be a little careful here. I think it looks clear. Kinda looks clear? Okay. Wow. Look at that. That looks amazing, doesn't it? Alright, so today is Sunday. I'm hoping the construction workers aren't working, but we're going to find out. So, let's have a little explore, see what we can find. To be honest, I think I see a lot of human poo-poo, so... We might get caught up in a um, little situation with some homeless people. I'm hoping not. Let's find out. So, uh... What's in here? Ooh, there's a few rooms here. Oh, you remember this old glass? We used to have this in school. Had like steel in there or something like that. And it would strengthen the windows. You don't see it too much anymore. Oh, look at that. The drink of choice. Yeah, you see all the construction all over here. You see a lot of those chimneys as well, those tall chimneys. You see a lot of urban climbers going up those. So. I wonder what this room is for. So, um, I think someone might be living in there. So we're going to respect their privacy and leave. Well, they're not home right now. Maybe that's fortunate, I don't know. Ugh. Or maybe they could tell me some great stories, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, lots of places like this to explore. Uh, a lot of them are getting torn down now. You see um, half torn down buildings over there. So yeah, a lot of history is getting erased. Um, still got the churches though. If you love your church, they, they do a good church in old Belgrade. They do a good church. All right, let's get back down these janky stairs and see what else we can find. So food for thought, is it not? Food for thought. If we look just over the road here, this one's quite iconic. Uh, they left it again in its state. It was originally bombed. Uh, by NATO as well, look at that, right across the road. And it's almost like a symbol, a symbol of the history. We're not going to fix this, we're not going to repair this. It's going to serve as a reminder, a reminder for our children and their children after them as well. So 
that you can see here, look. Absolute chaos, absolute chaos. You see all these buildings here, but not only that, across the road. And conveniently, they've uh, placed a huge military poster <laughs> right on the building itself. Interesting. Uh, it looks like they have some sort of police or special forces there. You can see them behind me. I think they're pretty much guarding the area in case people kind of, you know, it's pretty easy to jump in and go on a little urban exploration. But um, yeah, absolutely crazy. It's, it's one thing seeing it on the news and another being so up close. You can see the rubble, you can touch it. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely unbelievable. So I think where the argument lies is you can bomb key communications points, you know, like railways, airports, uh, telecommunications, you know, the usual. But uh, <laughs> so uh, NATO, uh, they bombed a TV and radio uh, service. We'll see that soon. Um, and some other buildings, a lot of civilians died in those bombings. And this is what kind of serves as a reminder today. But not only that, um, I think <laughs> The Chinese embassy also got bombed, uh, which included the deaths of three Chinese journalists, which caused a lot of tensions between NATO and China as well. Um, so it goes to show you when you're dropping airstrikes and bombs on a country, uh, it just seems like little, uh, it was a bit careless to say the least. So the same applies to all things in life. When two things are at war with each other, you're fighting, generally you pick the lesser of the two evils. Things come into it, like where you live, what your home country is, what your beliefs are. But generally that's the principal rule. Uh, there is option number two, where you go live with the animals in the forest by yourself and live a very solitary and happy life. Although that's quite hard to do these days. It's my opinion anyway. So we're just leaving uh, St. Mark Orthodox Church here in one of the main city parks. Absolutely crazy building. It's completed in the 1900s, but check it out. It's not bad. They do a good church in Europe. They do a very good church. Anyway, that's not why we're here. Why we're here, we're looking at another site of a NATO bombing. It was a, um, a Serbian radio and TV building. Maybe the plan was to knock out a communications point, which is, seems to be the art of war. However, in this building, uh, 16 people, I believe it was, 16 people died. Uh, they were in there working at the time. I think their manager failed to let them out or let them know, and then it, then it got bombed. But, um, I, 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 yeah, absolutely terrible. It's just through here now, um, right next to us. A nice little Russian church, look at that. Yeah, they say that was damaged in the bombing as well, but I think that one's been reconstructed now. It's like a, a little, little brother to the big church right there. But yeah, we're just coming to it now. It's under this archway. Again, like the other places as well that we saw before, uh, left in a state of disrepair as a memory. Uh, but there is something, a little silver lining right at the end, which we'll see in a very moment. A very tiny silver lining. Okay, here we are. So you just come under this archway here. Uh, perhaps you saw this on the news in the 90s. Uh, yeah, very famous photograph. And like I said, we're coming up to the 25th anniversary, so it's uh, no doubt going to get a few mentions uh, on the news again. Um, yeah. Uh, this is the way it is right now, still as it was before in uh, 
1999, almost 25 years ago. Uh, the mini silver lining I was talking about, obviously nothing compared to anything what happened, but it is a home to lots of little cats. They seem to be living around here. Uh, so I, th I think the cats get the bottom and the, and the pigeons, the pigeons gets the top, get the top. I think a woman comes over and feeds them as well. There's another one down there, look at that. So yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely crazy. Um, let's have a little look around the side as well. Um, but yeah, whoa, there's so many cats here. Look at that, there's one, one scarped off there. He's chilling on the car. Hello, are you friendly? You're definitely not friendly. I'm not with NATO. I'm real. Yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah, really, so sad, you know, it's, um, it, there's not really any words you can put into it. But I, I think the main takeaway here is, um, again, no one was account, uh, held accountable here. They were accused of using cluster bombs, uh, depleted uh, uranium, just like they accused Russia of around a year ago, right? Doing the exact same thing. Uh, to Ukraine, so um, it's funny when you live long enough, you see the full circle, you see the hypocrisy, um, you start learning how the world really works, you know, um, and that really helps a lot when you start traveling and seeing things from both sides. But yeah, mad, isn't it? Wow. I'm curious what's there now. They have an antenna, perhaps they put something behind it, but you know, um, from my understanding, it's been purposely left as a symbol and of a memory of what happened. So there's one last thing I'm going to show you and then we're going to wrap up the video and um, yeah, move on with the day. I'm not sure what this man is shouting about. Maybe it's not towards me, but towards these uh, crazy drivers. Hey! Hello, Katty. Wow. Hello. No. You? I come in peace. I come in peace. Third time lucky, come on. Come on. No, damn it. So here we are in the middle of the park. You remember the church from earlier? Well, we're just going along a little bit. I ran along, uh, and that's why I look a bit sweaty. It's nice to do a bit of running and a city tour at the same time. But um, yeah, here's is, or here is, more of a permanent monument right here. And remember at the start of the video when I said it's not just temporary signs, people are hanging up. Um, here you can see a fully erected monument. Marble there. It's like a bronze statue there of a child. And right at the bottom, look at the wording specifically. Dedicated to the children in NATO aggression. So the wording speaks well. The wording speaks a thousand words. And here the monument sits for everyone to see, for everyone to remember. Everyone to remember the history that unfolded here almost 25 years ago. And it's monuments like these that maybe you should put up in other countries where people can learn, understand, and visualize what happened. Because I know for a fact, uh, kids born in the 2000s probably had no idea this even happened, you know. So I think it's good to serve as a reminder for everyone. So. Nothing like this, well, no mishaps can happen again. No accidental bombing of uh, Chinese embassies, uh, civilian trains, uh, but really uh, taking no accountability and accusing others for doing the same thing you did almost 25 years ago. Crazy, isn't it? It's just the way the world works, the way uh, the politicians run things, control wars. Uh, 
Yeah, absolutely mad. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, if you're in Belgrade, I, I definitely recommend doing a little bit of a tour of uh, the buildings. Um, like I said in my Auschwitz video, it's good to just kind of look for yourself. See it once, you know. Um, I'm not saying the decision of NATO was wrong. I'm just saying that someone or something uh, should be held accountable. Uh, that's all, you know. You kill hundreds of people. Uh, there must be a penalty of, of some sort. Uh, anyway, that's the end of the video. Um, I hope you like the tour of Belgrade. Uh, I've uploaded another video on my channel if you want to check out the city a bit more and on the top 10 list. So if you're visiting, maybe you want something to eat, something to see, something to do, then check out that video as well. I'll link it in the description below so you can check it out. But uh, yeah, goodbye to Belgrade. We're leaving tomorrow. It's been a fantastic city. I'm very surprised. And to be honest, uh, having lived in London, Las Vegas, it's uh, a lot safer. A lot safer. Put it that way. Okay, take care. Thank you for watching.